Okay. okay. Sorry for the uh, for the delay. Back with round two, we have Lane Tower, Washington player versus Tyler Memora, three-time regional champion. They're the best of friends, and I, they came over to us and said, "We want to do some shenanigans on stream." So it might be a little hard to follow. They're kind of they're pranksters. We have, we're good on audio. They're pranksters. So uh, you know, we'll see a lot of. Uh, Probably see a lot of silly plays here, but hopefully we can keep track. We do know that Tyler is playing Blastoise. Probably similar to Ross's list. They're on the same team and all. Um, we don't we don't know what Lane's playing. Um, to go back, we do have some interesting other matches and other uh, results. We James Good did lose his first round, as I said. Um, Gordon Coates, Grandma Joner won his first round. Jack Pitcher is 1-0. Jack Pitcher. I'm just going to wait for some announcements. Sorry, I'm just going to continue these announcements. So after this round, we're going to take a lunch break. After this round, we're going to take a lunch break. Masters, be sure you pick up your t-shirt before you go to lunch. Be sure you pick up your t-shirt before you go to lunch. Free t-shirts for all the players as part of their entry fee. They're pretty sweet. They have like the play Pokemon like trainer with the Pokeball thing going right. on. Right, it's like the, the like, NDA logo. Yeah. Logo yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, as I was saying, Jack Pitcher, uh, third at Worlds 2012 in seniors, is playing Dragonite, and he's 1-0 versus another uh, very top Vancouver player named Ricky Gao. Um, David Cohen, if I can find his result. David Cohen won his first match, so um, Surprising. he's 1-0. <laughs> um, let's see what else we've got. Uh, Trevor Reed, Trevor, Trevor, uh, he won our he won the Oregon Regionals last year. He's 0-1 playing against our good friend and uh, top top Canadian celebrity Kale Chalifu, who is uh, actually unfortunately drew his last round. Um, trying to scan, trying to scan the uh, pairings for some other interesting matchups. Chase Maloney, senior world champion, 2012, took a loss in round one. It looks like. Paul Johnston, great Washington player, took a loss in his first round, unfortunately. Sam Chen, uh, let me find Sam. He's a very top player from the he Northeast. Drew. Sam Chen did draw his first round, so it's unfortunate. We see, just scanning the standings, I see a lot of draws. Uh, yeah. Mm, definitely a few dozen here, unfortunately, or at least a dozen here. This is weird. Um, again, we're hearing after this round there'll be a lunch break, so the stream should be online, but we will not. Uh, we'll have some content dur during the lunch round, hopefully. Hopefully, have some interviews or some other kind of player content. But, Players are shuffling up. Do you want to put it to the table? You can just see your own Tyler Nanamora on the right of your screen with some pink sleeves. He wears a he uses exclusively pink dragon shields. Shield. So uh, there's that and lane tower on the left. So we randomly numbered everybody on our roster. We randomly chose some numbers up there. And courtesy of Connection, the Connection Games and Comics, we have a gift certificate going to Elvin Nick. And Isaiah Elvin, is taking pictures of, this, of the standings right now. Those will be up on Facebook and Twitter in um, just a few moments. And uh, Lane is using the downtime to uh, play, his, play his 3DS. So. <laughs> One going to Brian uh, if you're not aware of Lane, please go on Six Prizes and look at the Leonard Batfish article. Uh, yeah, this, this is his name. The article is, uh, I think it's called Ta Tackling Inconsistently. Inconsistency. Um, it's really one of the only humor articles written in Pokemon. It's, it's hilarious. I, I have a name drop in it. Yeah, it's, oh, Lane, it's actually fantastic. Lane putting on his uh, Play Pokemon t-shirt. Those are the shirts he got for registering. So $20 free t-shirt. Right now they're giving away gift certificates and Going other cool things. So. And let's see, I can uh, from my seat I can see Amelia Bottomiller's game. She's a Washington player, granted into world this year. I can see Ross's game. Mark Hansen. Uh, I can see Mark Hansen. 
Um, see Jack Pitcher. I can see a few Sam Chen, so hopefully we'll like, be able to get you some. Uh, I, I really hope Jack Pitcher does well. Chet. So hopefully we can see some. Uh, for those wondering, Chase did cut his hair. In our junior division, Victini hats go to Clinton Decker. Clinton Decker. A little chilly in here. Not, not a fan of this vent that's turned on. We are right under, or we're right uh, under a vent, so we're getting a little, uh, a little chilly. Remember, as a reminder, guys, Tyler and Lane are the best of friends. They're some of my best friends, and they're probably going to be joking around a lot and maybe seeing some things you're not used to seeing. But we'll, uh, I'll try and keep up with the madness. What time does lunch end? Looks like Tyler will be going first, as indicated by the lunch, Chandelure lunch, Bandai right. toy on his uh, <laughs> active. Down to start off this round in five, four, three, two, one. All right, you may begin. And they're standing their vanguards. Uh, Tyler opens an Eevee opposite a Squirtle. Tyler attaches uh, fighting, discarding a Drift Blimp and a Mr. Mime to an Ultra Ball. You can tell Tyler's playing very fast, possibly because he's on camera and he knows it, but also just because he doesn't want to draw every tie every game. Um, also, I'll be I'll be uh, saying draw when I mean tie. It's just the vernacular I've learned, but I think draw. I, I, I think draw sounds so much better, but um, just know that that's what I mean when I say that. Um, Tyler taking some time to look through his deck, and he fetches another Eevee. And fighting on the Eevee. Opposite lanes, Lone Squirtle. And I see a Bangle in Tyler's hand, as well as a Frozen City, and Tyler will Juniper. Uh, fresh. Fresh hand of seven cards. <laughs> Lane, Lane looks very upset. I think he, I think he just learned what Frozen City did. Um, and not a fan of that. Clearly, yeah, no, not, not quite a fan. Playing Blastoise, it's not, not the best card to see on the field. Not fun. Hopefully, he can bump it with a beach. Hopefully, or. Lane has enough, has enough beaches. And uh, Tyler is, he uses Eevee's attack and gets a Flareon and a Leafeon out of his deck. I uh, remind you that we're still in game one. If you're just joining us, we're on turn lanes turn one. Just started. Um, lane plays an end. Gonna negate Ty not only Tyler's uh, or he's gonna negate Tyler's uh, evolution searching attack. So that's all. It's all back in the deck now. And turn one end isn't really what you like to see as a Blastoise player. But, um, and it looks like they're making some debates. Again, Tyler and Lane are silly boys, gonna be doing some silly things. Yeah, they're just. Um, but Lane is nice enough around. to show us, the, show us his hand. Um, doesn't look like he has too much action going on. Yeah, probably not an ideal start. No, I mean, you also never, not the worst, so. L Lone, uh,. Lone Squirtle and do your opponent drops Frozen City, you play N, and then you pass. <laughs> Isn't that exactly what the Blastoise deck wants to see? Uh, Lane Tower, not only is he a good player, but he's also a good dad. Yeah. Um, one of the top Poké Dads, really, really in the world, but um, you know, shout out to him for that. Not everyone can, uh, not everyone can you know, raise a child as he can. And Tyler has, has no plays. And just searches this time for a Flareon and a Leafeon. So Tyler's hand appears not to be all that great. And lane tap, sorry. And good. Oh no, lane decides to cut. Wow, fake Tyler out with the with the tap cut there. <clears throat> Threw him a curveball. All right. So lane makes his first big play of the game with a Skyla. Hopefully that Skylar can afford to catch a beach to shut off that uh, frozen city that we see in play. And no, he but goes nope. for an yeah, ultra ball. I mean, it's just what you have to do sometimes. I, Lane did show us his hand, but unfortunately I, I couldn't we, we can really see it when he flashed it, but he's going to immediately play the ultra ball as you do. 
discarding a water and a tool scrapper. <laughs> Good choices all around. Right? That's yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not. I don't know what Tyler's deck is, but uh, it doesn't seem like he's one that relies heavily on tools. And I, I think the, the important thing to realize about this match is, even though the players are joking around, they will be, you know, doing these kind of silly things. Is that Tyler? Uh, and Lane are both very good players, and they also likely know each other's entire deck list. They test a lot together. They're you know good, they're very good friends. Um, and Lane will drop the Squirtle and pass. So Tyler not has a, not really going well for Lane. Yeah, no. I mean, he's basically spent two turns um, doing nothing. And Tyler weighing his options. I see a DC. I see a Fighting. I see a million other cards. I attaches, attaches the, he attaches the DCE to his EV, uh, that damages himself, and then does 30 to the Squirtle. Oh, and there, there goes the, there goes the Frozen City. Yeah, <clears throat> that's gonna be good for Lane. I mean, I'm assuming Tyler plays a few, but it's still right. good to get it off there I mean, while you're setting up. As many turns as possible. I mean, if Lane can, if Lane can set up a Blastoise this turn, just kind of get the energy on board anyway. You know. Just kind of make it so he doesn't have to be, uh, even if Tyler gets another person city, he doesn't have to be reattaching the energy. It'd be very important. And <laughs> Lane attaches a lightning to his squirrel. Tyler seems confused by that. Nope. Tyler, Tyler forgets that there's a frozen city in, <laughs> that there's not a frozen city in play. Um, <laughs> they play some entertaining games, and Lane plays an N. So. Um, again, ends just all around aren't really what you want to be doing in Blastoise. He doesn't, he doesn't have anything. Uh, but you know, you gotta, gotta do what you gotta do. And you know, Lane may be staring down a board of, or Tyler, Lane may only have a board of Mono Squirtles, but Tyler only has a board of a million e or two EVs. So the no, and Lane's not too far behind. I think that they're not very, you know, not taking this game very seriously. They're both just friends who are having some fun, so it's almost like kitchen table Pokemon, you know? And Lane, <laughs> Lane chooses to retreat, promotes the Keldeo, making some considerations, and now he'll beach for, I believe, two cards. And Tyler takes his turn, top decks a fighting energy. Um, fortunately, can't, the angle of Tyler's hand makes it frustrating because I can almost see it, but I can't quite. Looks like Tyler's going to evolve to a Flareon. Lane seems displeased. Tyler attaches uh, an energy to its EV. I believe it's a fighting. Maybe a fire could get you what type. Tyler has an end in hand, a DCE, and also slam the slam the end. And uh, Tyler's taking time to shuffle. You know, I, as I'm sure you all know, Pokemon is just. Frustrating game right now because of all the shuffling. You know, it just takes takes a lot of time and takes a lot of uh, effort just to keep shuffling, keep shuffling. And for us, you know, personally, just uh, doing commentary while people are shuffling just isn't isn't the best. I wish they would limit the amount of sh mid game shuffling you have to do, but it's the game. Yeah, it's the game we have. Thank you. And uh, the round two pairings are on Facebook if you'd like to look at that. Um, Check on some of your friends. Isaiah Middleton, founding member of OTV, put those up today. He's on tech support. We're very thankful for that. And the Flareon's doing 70 to the Keldeo. And it's now Lane's turn. Hopefully, I mean, Lane's just pl praying for a Blastoise at this point. Uh, plays a Black Kyrum. Making some, consider some, con ah, some considerations. I see a water energy in his hand. I see a catcher. I think I see... I think I see Super Rod maybe just taking his time at Juniper definitely. So he's gonna catch her up the EV. Presumably just to buy a bit of time. I'd say. Um I'm not sure again uh, and uh Lane is forced to Juniper what appears to be two rare candies. <laughs> it's entirely possible that Lane is just not taking this game seriously and does not care at all, but I'm not, not sure. No one really knows what goes on in, in the mind of Lane. And Lane will 
Rush in and he activate Tropical Beach. Tyler drops a Stunfisk, one of my favorite cards in the world, and drops a DCE on it. Calrus for six from Tyler. Yeah, six from Tyler, and I don't know. It's gonna be rough. Uh, we see Tyler doing some front-facing shuffles. That's always kind of annoyed me, but you know what? What can you do? I'm just con confirming he has six cards. <laughs> Lena uh, questioning him as you as you know as you do with your friends. And again, kind of, you know, kind of hard to commentate this match. I'm not sure what Tyler's up to, and Lane definitely knows, knows what Tyler's up to. So Tyler does evolve into Leafion. Uh, and deals 40. Lane will draw. He has a full grip of cards. Hopefully he can get something going this turn, but as you know, sometimes this is not what happens. As a reminder, we had... Uh, Ross Coffin take a 1-0 victory. It means he won one game before time was called. Uh, in our first match, he's playing Blastoise. Uh, he'd be a tool drop deck. Uh, we're from Vancouver, British Columbia. On the Bubble is brought to you by Top Cut Central. If you like the playmats they're playing on, if you like our stream, if you want to improve our stream, if you want to support us, if you want to support Top Cut Central, if you want to support the game, please go to topcutcentral.com and purchase a playmat. Sell them your bulk. Uh, like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash OTB Pokemon. Just, you know, try and, if you're liking what you're seeing, try and support. Tyler with the classic one card cut. Um, again, if you just joined us, I'm going to try and keep track of other matches of notable players and notable decks and let you guys know what's going on. I can, from my vantage point, I can see quite a few. And Lane drops his third Squirtle onto the bench. Making some considerations, and appears Lane will be activating Tropical Beach for two cards. Draws a water, and is it a f mm, I couldn't tell what that last card was, but... Uh, Alright, DC, the Fighting Energies joins the, the Sunfish with a DCE on it. It's now ready to rumble. Never need to rumble. Uh, can't re 40, can't retreat, buddy. Um, Stunfish remains one of my favorite cards. Glad it was kept legal. And oh, Lane. Yes, Lane with the classic five pile cut. Uh, <laughs> Tyler, Tyler seems unamused. <laughs> oh, they're having some trouble over cutting. Bit of a dispute here, but all in good fun. <laughs> and we have a Drift Loon in Tyler's hand. And like, couldn't, couldn't, couldn't see what else. Tyler, always known to play interesting rogue decks, deals another 40 damage to that Keldeo and passes the turn. Um, be aware that the record on the bottom of your screen indicates the player's win, loss, and draw record, and we'll put up, when game one is finished, we'll put up the result of that uh, on the opposite side of the player's name so we can keep track of uh, what game we're in and who's currently leading. <clears throat> one thing to note is that whether these guys are playing seriously or not, um, this is taking a bit of time, you know, no, nothing has really happened yet, so it's, it's very possible that these guys are just playing for a draw. They've probably spent, I don't know, 15 minutes? Well, how long have we been on the air? Quite a while, uh, <laughs> essentially doing nothing. Lane's making some considerations yeah, now. Basically nothing happening. <laughs> and I, <laughs> and I mean, to be fair, it is sort of helping Lane, because if he were just attaching energies, you know, doing all his attachments that he can do, Right now, it would be hurting him because Leafeon would be hitting for more, and he doesn't have a blast of his hit, So Yeah, Leafeon does more damage based on the number of energy in play. I don't, you know, the, the, the evolutions are, have been played before, but they're not exactly at the top of the meta game. so some of you don't know what that does, uh, don't know what those cards do, we'll do the best to explain it. Um, also, pkmncards.com, I think is the best resource. It's very, very minimalist and very, very sleek for finding out, uh, looking, at, looking at card scans and such. Uh, Adam Capriola. Uh, founder of SixPrizes.com made that website. It's criminally underrated for looking at cards and advanced searching cards. Uh, Tyler 
making some considerations again. They seem like they're having a little bit of discussion at the table. And the Kelly is knocked out. That's the first prize is taken. Tyler will take two prizes. Uh, Lane making some considerations about what he wants to renote, promote. Seems like he was debating over a black Kiram. And that's what it'll be. Both players with absolutely huge hands. Um, again, if you're wondering about the shuffling and cutting, there seems to be a lot of talking to chat about that. They're just the best of friends, kind of messing around. Um, again, I don't think these guys really care how the, how the match turns out all that much. And they, all, in all honesty, probably just want to get to lunch and uh, get to lunch in due time. As a reminder, this is a one-day event, seven rounds, and a top eight will be broadcast today and probably a little bit tomorrow as well, and I hope you'll feel join us for that. Uh, we'll be here all day. And so. uh, pretty much. What? And night, pretty much. Yeah. I mean, we're making good time. You know, the, the COs here are great. It's only noon. Yeah, very well-run event, but I, I, I could they can only work with so much time. I could see the event ending before the end of the day, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. And looks like Lane will take a Juniper and a Delos. Okay, so now, he, now Lane's actually got some kind of stuff going on. Got things set up. He's doing the energy retrieval. Uh, fetching the... Uh, well, he doesn't, doesn't chooses not to fetch lightning. Gets two water back. Del uses him on the Keldeo. Looks like he's going <laughs> to... Russian retreat. Russian retreat. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> knock out the Flareon, take one prize. Um, Tyler, I think, is making sure to keep track of the um, Pokemon in his discard pile, it looks like. Uh, making some considerations about who he wants to send up. And Tyler will catch her up, the damaged Keldeo. The 70 on it, and it appears like we're actually getting into the swing of things with this game. Tyler, uh, call racing for five, seven cards. Seven cards total, so both these players have had pretty immense hands the whole time. Uh, beach, beach after beach after beach, and Tyler unfortunately has not gotten another Frozen City out. I'm not sure what his list looks like, I'm not sure how many he plays, but... See if Tyler can get some spicy ones. Tyler, again, one of my closest friends. He's known for. Uh, if you ever want to confirm how many cards are in his hand, because you, you know you want to make sure he didn't draw too many or want to play an end. Oh, there's the Frozen City, so it's going to be a big, huge boon to Lane, and he looks dissatisfied. Yep. Uh, Tyler often say, oh, how, many, "How many cards are in your hand?" And Tyler will reply with four really good ones. So he's uh, Tyler. Tyler's one of my favorite players, favorite people in the world, but also favorite players just because he's able to. Uh, Play the game well, play the game at the highest level, but also have fun with it, and also just be a real good guy. Um, looks like Lane will be superior energy retrieving. I'll let you get back four energy. Just gonna snap off those four waters there. Looks like he discarded a Blastoise and a Colrus. Yeah, there is a Blastoise. I couldn't, I couldn't quite I think tell. It, yeah, because he's, he's running the shiny ones. <laughs> Shiny one's always uh, always preferred. And yeah, that Frozen City damage coming into play here. Um, he's been playing around it as much as he could, but he just really needs to get another beach in there. Right. Avoid that stacking up on him. And it looks like another superior energy retrieval coming down. I think he only has three three targets this time. Uh, doing some damage. <laughs> Black Kiram. Is he going to KO his own kill? Yep, I don't are, think Lane is going to. <laughs> people in the chat wonder if he's going to KO his own kill Dio. You know, uh, it's not as silly as a question as it would usually be. I don't know. You know, who knows what Lane's going to do? But the prize is uh, Lane takes another prize, going down to four. Um, Tyler with two. Uh, if you are watching the chat and you're from the Northwest, you're from, you know, you have some horses in the race, let's say, let us know who you want to see featured. I think we're going to feature a BC player next round, or at least a Canadian player. Uh, hopefully, I'm not going to lie, I'm going to be a little biased and hope that Jack Pitcher managed, rattles off a 2-0 with his uh, 
with his Dragonite deck. I would love to. Love to but, see that. On and there we go. So that's game one. Jack is a uh, usually plays something pretty wacky. I think at our nationals he played Gothitel Hammers. <laughs> yeah, uh, Jack beat me in the regional, the BC regionals this past season. Uh, Just states. He, uh, the Selgor? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So with with this crazy Selgor deck with Dustnors and all this stuff before that was a thing. Like we always used before Edmund Curris won U.S. Nationals with it, and <laughs> he beat me the round after he beat you that day. <laughs> Um, again, uh, for those of you who don't, who don't know, like a lot of these players might not be big names to you. Jack uh, just aged up last year, but is incredibly well. He uh, third, and, third or fourth in seniors, not quite sure. Semi-finalists, at least. In seniors. Yeah, so it looks like Tyler took game one. Yeah, Tyler, Tyler took game one. Uh, sorry, we didn't get that updated. Um, and we are going to go into game two. It's... I'm not sure what time is like. Uh, again, we will be having the time. At, if not displayed, we'll be keeping track of it um, as rounds go on. Yeah. Um, I was going to do it, but we had some tech issues to sort yeah. out first. But, um... Looks like players are in the final stages of shuff shuffling. And, yep, so we're back. Back at the booth, OTB mugs. Um, waiting for the players to shuffle up a little bit. It seems like they're having a little bit of fun. Tyler, not sure if you guys saw us on the stream, but Tyler is wearing a shiny collection Gardevoir in his uh, in the band of his glasses. And all right, so we're back back to the table, and so the players are getting set up. Pretty quick shuffles again. I think that these they might be playing for a drop, but uh, hey, some just want to play the game. Looks like Lane starting with two Squirtles. Like I couldn't see the first card, but I, I know Tyler one, of the, a mulligan. one of the cards on the bench. And Tyler does have a mulligan. Again, more shuffling, and Lane does get to go first this time, which is very, very advantageous to the um, Blastoise deck. So it's very possible that... Uh, I'm hoping at least that Lane has a better game than he had in game one. Tyler, looks like he's opening with a stun fist. Sending out his prizes. Uh, L <laughs> yes, Lane forgot how match play works. It's, yeah, it's a very confusing thing. So yes, Lane opens up with two different arts of Keldeo. I never like to see that, but regardless, two Keldeo and a Squirtle. Top deck's a third Keldeo. He's just, this kid's made of Keldeos. Um, looks like he's gonna slam a water on the active. Need a chat up. And rush in. And pass the turn. And <laughs> Tyler will attach his Sunfisk. Again, Sunfisk. Good card, but maybe not the best versus Blastoise. It, uh, not only is it weak to water types, but it also has an attack uh, that uh, does, uh, this allows the opponent to retreat. But unfortunately, Keldeo's Russian will get around that. And Lane can now rush in three times, so he is going to triple get around that. Yeah. <coughs> His his uh 30, thirty is it thirty it's twenty twenty his first yeah, attack muddy right? water yeah muddy time. water for twenty and then twenty to the bench also doesn't hit Squirtle so it's just all around countered by yeah right. his just, natural abilities right so the end so Tyler actually benches a Landorus Lane points out that it's weak to water <laughs> no and Tyler plays Lane's leaser card Frozen City. <laughs> So yeah, Lane being a buddy, pointing out that Landorus is weak to water. Right. Probably allowing Tyler Just a chance to... Friend. <laughs> <laughs> Probably allowing Tyler a chance to take it back. And Tyler doesn't want to. He keeps it there. And looking like he's going to get a heavy ball. That indicates he's likely getting... <clears throat> excuse me, likely... Grabbing a Blastoise. Getting a Blastoise, yeah. holding the rare candy. A little bit excited about it. Yeah. <laughs> does get the Blastoise down. It's going to be really good for him, even though that Frozen City's there. Yeah, turn two Blastoise is nice. Frozen City is a little bit of a, a little bit of a pain. Uh, Lane taking some damage off that Frozen City. And 
Looks like double juniper catcher. Is that what I see? Yeah. So catcher up the landers. Double uh, lane juniper. Lane played a Skyla this. Turn. Yep. All right. Well, All right. Lane, well. <laughs> lane, rem lane remembers that, and uh, Tyler <laughs> points. Just quick to point it out. So he just passes. Yeah. So he passes. Passes the turn. Tyler's gonna call her for six after dropping a Mr. Mime onto the bench. Again, a little hard to commentate exactly what Tyler's doing. I'm not sure of the deck. I haven't seen the deck around too much. Maybe I'm behind on something, but uh, um, so if, excuse me if, I'm, if there's certain lines of play I don't see or anything like that. And you can see Tyler drops an Eevee and is going to pass the turn to Lane. Lane immediately junipers and draws. He hits a water. Yeah. Not, probably not as many as he would like to. Evolves the War Turtle. He's gonna deluge the water onto that Keldeo, taking some damage for it. Uh, as a reminder, uh, Ross Coffin was victorious with the Blastoise deck in round one. Took a 1 0 victory, meaning that he won a. Uh, Won a single game by the time time was called. And Tyler promoting the Leafeon. After the Landers gets knocked out, that Landers was just unfortunate for Tyler. It's basically a free prize for Lane. Lane had, did it take 60 damage to do it, but I think that's the least of his concerns. And Ross, or sorry, Tyler, getting out a second Eevee. Immediately playing on the bench, bangling, and he is going to Bianca for a fresh hand of six. Attaching the DCE to Leafeon. And scores the knockout in two prizes, evening things up four to four. Um, the way we have the layout, we've cho we've chosen not to display the prizes on board. Uh, Lane with a tool scrapper. Uh, the, the lighting's great. Uh, there's plenty of room on the table. I think you can tell the prizes are, and we'll be updating that as much as possible. So uh, feel free to ask us if you need to. Ask in the chat. We have Isaiah, Isaiah Melton on tech support. Myself, Kenny Wisdom, and my best friend Chase Neiman on. <laughs> On the commentary and Lane Callrises for seven cards. So it's always nice. Yeah, I mean, I think a big Callrus is fantastic. So Professor Oak's new theory plus one. So hopefully we can we can get a. Uh, I think really what Lane's hoping for is Tropical Beach and a bunch of energy. Right, he just needs to bounce that Frozen City, and he does nail Tropical Beach, see him playing with the... But no two, energy. 2000, yeah, energyless hand. I didn't see if there's any retrievals, but I don't like don't like those 2012 Tropical Beaches, but, no. you know, I'm... He does have a, the ugly one, so maybe he won't play it just because right. it is ugly. He doesn't want to look poor, and he, no, well, he does. No, he, he does look He's poor. taking the yes, game over dignity right now. Yes, he's... Whew, well, that's, a, that's the mark of a true sportsman. He's, I wouldn't have done that. He appears to be ultra-balling. I didn't... Unfortunately, I didn't get to see what he discarded. I'm um, just taking a quick scan of the crowd. I see Ross Cawthon is still playing. Um, James Good is finished. I can't quite see James' result, but he doesn't look too happy, so he may be on his way. Maybe 0-2 down right now. Essentially eliminating the chances of a top cut. Uh, Lane will beach and see three, see three waters, four waters, so. Lane, you see with the Keldeo active, double Blastoise, uh, Black Kiram on the bench, Keldeo and Squirtle on the bench. Tyler drops a Drifloon and chooses to beach for what I believe was one card. And Lane, Deluge three times, slamming down those waters. Looks like He's gonna Skyla, so looks like Lane can take control of this game. Price again, Tyler with no more uh, no more EXs in play, so Lane's gonna have to do twice the work of Tyler essentially. But 
He's definitely in more here. control, more in control of this game than the previous. Oh, for sure, for sure. Tyler doesn't really have a whole lot going on. So I mean, ho I know hopefully that will translate to a to a win for Lane. We can see a game three. Might not be enough time. Again, I'm not sure exactly what time is, but we're running low on time, so we might see our first draw of the tournament or of the stream at the very least. Yeah, there have definitely been a few draws so far. <laughs> oh yeah, a few, a few dozen likely. It's pretty crazy the difference that the 50-minute best of three makes. Right. I mean, just, uh, I'm of the opinion there's not enough time, but there's been infinite posts everywhere about this, so I'm not really too concerned. And uh, This is lunch next round, so I do believe we're going to try and get a quick interview with the winner of this match. Um, maybe both of just, them. Uh, maybe, maybe both of them just uh, talk, talk, over, talk over a little bit what they were just going through their heads, you know? We whipped in that last round with Ross, but unfortunately, you know, the round went to time, and after resetting the stream and all the other stuff we had to do, we just didn't have the time. Okay. So, Tyler choosing to beach for two cards. Lane draws, and Lane is now firmly in the driver's seat of this game. Lane taking on a quick, quick look through his discard pile. A dowsing machine, a water, and a rare candy away. Gets the catcher, catches the EV. And is just looking to score cheap knockouts. He now has two prizes left. Two Tyler's four, so the playing field is essentially evened up now. Uh, Tyler with a Drift Blim active and four Pokemon on the bench. Ted has a DCE to a Leafeon. And a bangle as and well. A bangle to the Leafeon. Tyler looks like he has a few supporters in his hand. Bouncing the Tropical Beach, so again, this is the play where I'm just not unless Lane, unless Tyler can get the knockout on the uh, Keldeo this turn. Doesn't appear like that'll matter too much as the Keldeo can just kind of run over things and he has a bunch of other Pokemon with fresh uh, with no damage on them, so this is a not the best timed for the city in the world, but certainly something you you play, especially when you're gonna Draw eight cards of a supporter. Nine cards, actually. <laughs> then Tyler, of course, is able to score the knockout. So we'll see what happens. We might actually get a 2 0 victory for Tyler here. Lane bouncing the Frozen City, immediately has Tropical Beach. Luckily, he has the nice art ones this time. Catches two, looks like two water to his black here, and Juniper is for a fresh hand of seven. <coughs> He's gonna get a lightning on there as well. Yep, and another ready, water. <laughs> getting ready to black Ballista, looks like. Level ball gonna thin out his, doesn't even look. No, no, there's nothing left, just playing it to play around some late game ends. Yeah, there's the black blister taking Leafeon out of there. Leafeon's a pretty big threat for him, I'd say. He has to play around it quite a bit. Yeah, and now he's leaving Tyler in a position where Tyler counting the Pokemon in his discard pile. Again, not sure it's in Tyler's hand. We see We see a Drift Bloom. Uh, sorry, Drift Blim become active. We see an Ultra Wall Tyler. By Tyler's body language, I think it looks like he um, has a plan. You know, it looks like he thinks he's in control of the game and might might have a way out. Um, I think <coughs> that path to victory looks like he's going to get a Flareon. No, I guess it, it's a Drift, uh, drift Lou in the pre-evolution of Drift Blim. Playing another Ultra Ball. Just ending out like <laughs> discarding that very Drift Drift Loon, so that's, a, that's some negative card advantage right there. Discarding a Fighting as well. Searching and searching for the Flareon. Lane taking a quick look at the discard piles. Oh. And Tyler with the attachment to Flareon, a bangle on the Flareon. 
And the catcher on the Keldeo. Retreating, and that's Tyler. Tyler has the game. So that's Tyler Nomura, victory 2-0 over Lane Tower. I'm going to go grab him for an interview real quick, uh, and then um, we will be back very shortly. And I'm back with Tyler Nomura. Hi. The winner of our last round, uh, one of my very best friends. And uh, let's talk about the round a little bit. How do you, I, when I went over to grab you for the interview, I heard Lane said that the matchup was unwinnable for yeah. him. Do you agree with that? Yeah, it's about like something like 75, 25 for me. So <laughs> close to not a win as you can get. Yeah. Um, so what, what inspired you to play the EV deck here? Like what was your, what um, was your reasoning? Why well, I played it last week and I went 4 3 1 because I played against like Landorus three times in a row after round three. Right. Um, so that kind of was bad for me. Um, so I knew a lot of good players today, like Ross and people were winning Blastoise, so I figured I'd give it another shot. So it's just like a meta game versus Blastoise, but it has tough time versus like the big basics decks? Yeah. I think you, I texted you about what happened last week and you said, when they have bigger basics than mine, I usually lose, so I think yeah. it's a pretty good estimation. <laughs> so how did you feel? Did you, did you think you were going to get two, like a 2 0 quick victory? Or um, it, it looked like you guys were playing for a while. Time hasn't been called yet, but. Uh, usually, the deck that the Leafeon deck goes like 2-0 or 0-2, like right. it very rarely actually goes to time. Right. And if it does, it's usually still a 2-0 or 0-2. Like, I've only got one time before. Right. That's definitely a consideration, you know, run, run a deck that doesn't just go to ties. So. Yeah. Alright, well thank you Tyler. Uh, thank Thanks you. for coming out. Have a great time on the rest you of the too. tournament. And uh, we will